This might be one of the most valuable videos that I could make, like actual practical tips to help reduce your editing time. Things that have genuinely saved me hours, if not days per wedding film. To be able to free up that time to take on more bookings or spend it with family, invaluable. Also, new office, but I mean, this look is temporary uh, and a bit bare, but when it's finished, it'll look good. So I've got a few key points here that I think will help in speeding up your editing time, reducing it. It is very much a mindset thing. This stuff works, but you've got to be strict. You've got to let go of that perfectionism to an extent. It'll make sense. You know, if even one of these things helps, then it was worthwhile. So please let me know in the comments uh, if you find any of this helpful. First thing I want to talk about is the easiest time saver, which is color grading. Now, obviously color grading is a brilliant visual editing tool. I'm not like not disputing that. It defines your style. It sets the mood of whatever you're watching. So in Hollywood, using color grading makes sense. And even like in, to a certain extent in wedding films, it makes sense. You know, you can grade in a warmer look for that sort of cozier, lovey kind of feel, or you can be more sort of muted, desaturated for a more elegant film, or you can choose to color grade in black and white, for example. It all conveys different things. So obviously it's got its place, but the thing that I see all the time with wedding filmmakers is that we we really, we emphasize this too much. We obsess over color grading, spending hours uh, tweaking those little dials like per clip, not to mention spending fortunes on LUTs and custom color grades that never work as well as advertised. My point is, does it really matter? You know, you've got to remember your target audience. Brides and grooms are the ones watching your films and their families. At the end of the day, brides and grooms aren't going to be scrutinizing the white balance of their wedding film. So, like, you've got to remember your target audience. Now, I, I mean, I color grade. I've got my own custom look that I've made and I apply it to every single one of my clips but it's just a copy and paste over every single clip job. It takes me seconds to do at the end of editing a film. Never had a single complaint. It looks nice, job done. So if you're spending more than a few minutes color grading your films, like per film, just ask yourself like, is it really necessary? Who are you really doing it for? Are you doing it to be precious and to be an artist or are you doing it for the benefit of your bride and grooms? Save yourself some time. Another huge sort of time drain is sourcing the right music for your films and like the right track, the right song for your wedding film can make or break it and it's well worth the time that you spend finding the right track and it's, you know, it, take, it does take time, that's kind of unavoidable. What I found helpful though is that once I've found that, that perfect song, you know, the, the song that you scour the, the music licensing sites and you find that song that's sort of four or five minutes long, perfect length for a highlight film, it peaks at all the right moments. One, once you've found that song, I have a folder on, on my computer called songs for highlight films and I'll put it into that folder. So rather than sorting a new track for every single film, I've got a bank, a folder full of wedding tracks of about 20, 30 songs that I can just keep coming back to uh, when, you know, whenever I see fit. You know, you can have sort of in, in, in longer feature like films, you can have, you know, songs that are good for the morning prep, songs for good that are good for the night do, songs that are good for going over ceremonies. And then once you've built up that library of songs, you're saving all that time that you would spend on the licensing sites, scouring to find the right tracks. It sounds really obvious, um, but I know a lot of people don't do it. Next one is, is really important, and that's getting it right in camera in the first place before you get it into post-production. The less time that you record for, the more stable your clip is, making sure that it's bang in focus. All of that is going to save time when you get it. The, the more right you can get that clip in camera on the day, the less time you're going to spend in post-production. On a wedding day or any whatever shoot you're doing, practice making sure that you only press record when you're 100% happy with what you're seeing on your viewfinder and you know I count in my head I go one two three a few seconds and then I'll stop and I'll stop recording where I think the cut should be made on that clip so it's training yourself to film clips for how you want to edit them so you think you're thinking about how it's going to edit together as you're filming it uh, and it's it's a skill and it takes practice and you you know, you get better and more accurate at it over time. But the better you can make that individual raw clip as you shoot it, 
the less time that you're going to spend going through reams of 10, 20, 30 second clips to then condense them down to two or three, trim off either end, stabilize it in post. Like that little bit, that bit of time that you spend culling your footage in the edit to get to the clips that you want in your timeline, like that window will get smaller and smaller the more you practice this. And also, if you're if you're filming to edit and you're thinking about how it's going to edit together as you're filming it, you can kind of train yourself to film in sequences. So in the morning when the bride's getting ready, having her makeup done, you can film a, a close-up clip of you know the makeup brush on her face, and then you can pull back and get a wide shot of that, and then you can maybe get a silhouette shot of that and get multiple shots of the same scene knowing that when you drop them into the edit, those clips are gonna line up one after the other. And then by experience, I know that as long as I've got 100 clips in camera from the morning part of the wedding, so that's bride prep, groom prep, guests arriving at the ceremony, everything up to the ceremony, um, and the bride walking down the aisle. If I've got 100 clips up to that point, I know I've covered bride prep, uh, and I don't need to overshoot it, I don't need to get any more, uh, so that when I get it back into the edit, I've got 100 usable clips there, they're all in a few seconds, I'm probably going to be spending minimal time culling those and they can just go straight into the to the edit, into the, the feature film in order, uh, more or less, might move a few things around. So I can go to my bank of music where I can pick out a perfect song that fits for the morning preps part of a wedding, I can put that over the top and so as I'm building up my film in the edit, using that framework of like this amount of clips and this song for the morning then it's the ceremony this amount of clips this song if you've got that framework in place for how you edit your films then generally you're going to be more efficient and save save more time okay last last point number four number five whatever my, la my last point is outsourcing now this is probably going to be the controversial one and i know a lot of people will be precious about outsourcing their their footage their films you know a lot of you out there are one man bands and you'll say no I edit, I film and edit everything myself, all my films are crafted by me, but outsourcing. Now you may or may not know this about me, I don't really share it too much, I don't make it public, but I, I outsource um, parts of my wedding film editing. And when I say outsource, I don't hire someone online and send it halfway across the world, I have someone in my office with me that I've trained up that edits in the style that I've trained them to edit in and I have an editor basically. And what my person does for me is calls wedding footage, I give them the, the hard drive, I, I give them all the clips from the wedding, they put it into a Final Cut library, they call it for me, they do the multicams, the ceremony and speeches, they may even pick out parts of the ceremony and speeches audio that I can use in my film. Um, and they basically prepare my edits for me so that I can come in and just have all the clips ready to go called uh, the ceremony multicams done and I can just build the film and do all the creative stuff. But just having that part of the job, the, the early stages of an edit outsourced by someone, uh, it's, it's hours worth of work per wedding that I'm saving. So that's, that's my little secret. I have um, someone on my team who edits parts of my weddings for me um, and I just, it's just something that I decided a long time ago uh, in order to be able to, to take on the amount of bookings that I want and fulfill the amount of weddings that I want to do because I love going and shooting weddings. Um, I needed to be able to free up that time because you know the editing side of things takes up most of the most of the workflow, most of the time per job. So I wanted to be able to free up a bit of that and having someone doing, like I say, bits of the editing, the multicams, the culling, it just made sense, it frees up a few hours per wedding, which when I'm doing 40 weddings a year, that's days and days of work, you know. So if you've been afraid to not color grade, you've not thought about any of these things, or you've, or you've kind of thought, well, I can't, I need to do the best I can, I need to do it all myself. If you've not made that leap before now and you've been scared to do it, then hopefully this video is inspiration motivation for you because as long as you're doing the very best by your couples and you're giving them the best product that you can um, and you're delivering for your target audience which is Brad and grooms you're not making your films for other videographers in the industry to scrutinize you're not looking at them yourself and going oh it's, you know Martin Scorsese does it better than me um, just make your couples happy so the next time that you're stuck in the edit and you're scrutinizing something really small, just think about, 
is this for the bride and groom or is it for me and does it really matter that much and that's not to say that you shouldn't do it that attention to detail and going above and beyond for your couples is important and that's what we all want to do um, but at the same time you know hopefully some of these tips can help with just making your editing a bit more efficient and allowing you time to work on other important areas of your business like your customer service and having that life balance you know spending time with family things like that i hope you found this video helpful useful let me know in the comments um or if you've any other tips that you do that, that save editing time please share them in the comments we can all benefit from that and i will see you very soon in the next video